So the LA Kings are one of the most confusing teams in the NHL to me. They show flashes of brilliance where they should be a top 5 team and then they play like a bottom 5 team and then lose a ton of games in a terrible fashion. On top of that you made some very questionable moves during the offseason and I'm talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois here 25 years old he's an 83 overall and you're paying him a bag 8.3 for the next 8 years. Yeah I don't know what the thought process was here. Even if you look at the numbers he's produced in his NHL career how is this an 8 million dollar man? Somebody that picks up about 60 points a season and puts in very little effort when it comes to defense. I don't really know how the LA Kings saw this right here and said, you know what, 8.3 million for the next eight years. But I'm going to try to rebuild this LA Kings team and I want to get them back to their previous greatness. So this is what the forward core is looking like. Obviously, the defensive core here is actually not too bad. Mikey Anderson, Drew Doughty, 88 overall, but he's not going to be here for too much longer. I mean, he's 33 years old. Bro's got probably three good years left in him. The rest of the defense here isn't necessarily bad, but it's not the greatest in the world. Like we have a 77 overall in our third pairing. Not exactly what I want. And what doesn't help this weak defensive core right here is Cam Talbot, your starting goaltender. Now, granted, he is an 86 overall, but there's one thing we have to realize. Bro is 36 years old. Why are you relying on a 36 year old to be your goaltender? Like at any moment, this man could just completely fall apart. Like granted, he's actually been pretty solid these last couple years, but you go back to 2018, 2019, absolutely terrible. Then again, he was in Edmonton and they play absolutely zero defense. So, I mean, you can't really put the blame on him. But at 36 years old, I wouldn't really be relying on this man to be your savior. And then backing him up is 31 year old David Riddick. So, I mean, I don't really know what the plan is here. Maybe they have a really good goaltending prospect that I don't know about, but this tandem right here, I don't really know what the thought process was for this season. So when it comes to the LA Kings, I'm just going to keep it a buck 50. I don't know about any of their prospects. I have no clue what their drafting has been like over the past five years. So I'm going to learn today, but I do know they did draft Quinton Byfield at one point, And this guy's going to be a stud in the league. We're giving him an eight year extension immediately. And I feel like this eight year extension is going to be a fair price for him. We're going to be doing 6.9 million for the next eight years. That's going to keep him on the team for a majority of this rebuild. And it's going to be at a fantastic price. Another guy I would like to keep on the team here is Matt Waugh. I'm not really sure what he's going to be asking for 4.1 million we can do 3.8 for the next four that's a pretty fair price for him and then to finish it all off Kaliev, we're also going to be giving you a deal so what are you going to be looking for we're going to do five years at two million dollars that's a great contract but they're doing all these moves right here we are going to have to make a couple trades right off the bat also while we figure out who we're going to be trading for here's how many subscribers the detroit red wings have you might notice that's still more subscribers than i have we've got to pass the red wings so if you haven't already subscribe to the channel all right so i know that the la kings acquired gavrikov last season at the trade deadline and he improved the defense a lot here but at 5.7 million i don't think that's the play so we're going to try to pick up Caden gooley from the montreal canadians for gavikov and a fifth round pick the main reason we're going to make this move right here is we just have to free up that money 5.7 million not worth it for an 83 overall especially since we would acquire Gooley, who's also an 83 overall and he's still on his rookie deal so we'd be saving some big money here we're gonna get this deal done pretty easily we just have to throw a seventh rounder in the mix and just like that we've got the money and now we can bring back those guys for next season all right so i'm gonna be completely honest we are not gonna be a good team this season for one main reason the defensive core here terrible line fits i mean drew Doughty, his is fantastic this guy right here he's fantastic we have to remember this man has seventh d potential and he's a 77 overall Matt Waugh, zero line fit here whatsoever. Caden Gooley, a decent line fit. And then Jordan Spence, a terrible line fit as well. So the right side outside Drew Doughty has terrible line fits. We have to have a 77 overall play on the second pairing because if we don't, we get a minus two boost there. That's not what we want. So we're going to rock with the team we have here. I sent Brant Clark, Alex Turcott, and Lafreniere down to the AHL. I want them getting a lot of ice time. If not, they're going to be playing on the bottom six here, maybe even the third pairing. That just wouldn't be ideal for them. So basically what I'm saying is this season is going to be a wash. We're not going to be competing for a Stanley Cup, plain and simple. We're going to simulate up to the trade deadline and then we're going to make some moves accordingly. But next season, once we bring in a better coach and a lot of the guys have developed on this team, then we'll be ready to take over. Okay, so right now, the LA Kings are not a good team. We're 25th in the entire league with a 28, 27, and 7 record. That's not good in the slightest. I mean, we clearly knew that this team wasn't going to be good. Defensively, we're not good. Offensively, we're not good. This team's not really good at anything. And that's going to be pretty clear through the stats on this team. Kopitar's leading the way. He's got 58 points here. Drew Doughty, 55. Kempe, 51. Kaliev, he's got 47. He's actually having a pretty solid season. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers, I'm expecting these to not look good. Cam Talbot, 25 wins, 2 shots, a 909 to 298. This isn't necessarily bad, but it's not good by any means. Now, I have taken a quick look at this team, and I think I figured out what we have to do here. we got to bring in an elite playmaker. Now, are we going to trade for an elite playmaker here? Are we going to wait till next offseason? I think we got to make a move sooner 
sooner than later. All right, so Kempe, I was talking about how you are a great young piece and you're gonna be one of the building blocks for this team. I've completely changed my mind. We need some playmakers and Kirby Doc, three years at 3.3 million, that's an incredible deal. And Alex Newhook, 2.9 million for the next four. That's also a fantastic deal. If I could bring both of these guys onto this team, it might be worth trading Kempe for. I also do wanna to try to get a pick in this deal if that is possible. Maybe give me a future second or third round pick. We'll try a third round pick to start with. So all of this right here for Kempe, I'm gonna be offering it over. They're saying no. I'll take that third round route. If we can get Kirby Doc and New Hook though, then that's definitely the play. So we got the two playmakers we need. Now I think this team might be ready to compete. I mean, that's a complete lie, but that move we made was definitely worth giving up Kempe for. All right, so I do want to mention the moves that we did make here are not for this season. Kirby Doc, I eventually want you to be the top playmaker on this team, and I want you on the first line. Ideally, in the future, our first line is going to look something like this. It's going to be Kirby Doc, Quentin Byfield. Kopitar is obviously not going to be here for the future. Best case, Ontario, Pierre-Luc Dubois develops. I don't think that's going to be happening, though. Now, New Hook, I do want you in the top six in the future, but right now, I do want Kaliev getting those top minutes here. Kem Fiel, you might not even be in the plan for the future. I'm going to keep it a stack right now. I think we're just going to be trading a lot of the older pieces away and yes i'm considering 27 year old kevin fiello one of the older pieces we're gonna break this entire la kings team down and then we're gonna rebuild them back up to greatness it's probably gonna take us another year to break down but we're headed in the right direction that's for sure i mean part of the breakdown also includes getting a new coach like plain and simple that man has zero fits with this team okay so after the moves we made the la kings are still not a good team i'm reversing the order because it'll be easier to find the kings we are 20th in the entire league with a 38 34 and 10 record the offense wasn't good and neither was the defense. Once we bring in a new coach though, all of that's going to change. Kopitar is leading the way. He picked up 83 points in 82 games, so he was over a point a game. Drew Doughty, 71. Kevin Fiala, 60. Quinton Byfield, he's got 58 and he's got himself an X-Factor now. Kirby Doc, I'm kind of curious to see what you did since joining the team. I'm not expecting too much, but 17 points in 20 games is actually pretty good. New hook, I know for a fact you didn't do too much because you're playing on the fourth line. Five points in 20 games. You know what? We're going to develop you into a great player next season, so I'm not too worried about this. What I am curious about is Pierre-Luc Dubois. Did this man increase in overall? Nope, he's still in 83. I'm going to make a rule in this rebuild. I'm not allowed to trade Pierre-Luc Dubois until his final season. Because, I mean, trading him away doesn't make this a realistic video in the slightest. Then again, I did just trade away Adrian Kempe, so this isn't realistic in the slightest. Cam Talbot, 32 wins, 2 shots, a 910 to 297. Good enough numbers, I guess. I mean, these aren't good enough because you finished 20th in the entire league. These suck. When it comes to the postseason, we have the most unlikely Stanley Cup matchup in history, the Seattle Crack and taking on the New Jersey Devils. Of all the videos I've recorded in NHL 24, I don't think I've ever seen this Stanley Cup final before. Seattle versus New Jersey, it just seems like such a weird Stanley Cup final, I don't know why. Now I guess you could say there is one thing to celebrate this season, since we were so bad and we still have our first round pick, we might be getting a top pick here. Unfortunately though, it doesn't look like that's going to be happening, we're getting the 13th overall. Shout out to the Washington Capitals though, because they jumped from 10 to 1, so I guess there is that. Also, the Rangers suck. They were 8th in the entire league. Not really too sure how that happened. Alright, so as we know, we have the 13th overall pick here. And this guy from Columbus that just got drafted with the 6th overall pick, he's an 80 overall defensive defenseman that plays on the left side. Right now, our left side is incredibly weak, and this guy would be huge for us. So I'm going to try to package up the 13th overall, Alex Turcotte, and the 109th overall pick and see if we can get this, man. I'm going to send this package over. They're saying no. Obviously, I'm not surprised they're going to be saying no to this package. But what if I give you a future third round pick, too? I mean, we're going to try a future third round pick first. And if that's enough, then we'll throw that fourth rounder back in the mix. So the 109th overall and a third round pick, is this going to be enough in order to get this, man? It doesn't look like it. I don't necessarily want to trade a second round pick right now, but it does have a lot of trade value. Value, and if we could get this defenseman then that would be huge for us they're gonna be saying no so a second and third round pick we're not gonna have too many draft picks for the next coming years but this guy right here would be absolutely massive for this team that's a smart move right there and as we know late in the draft especially in the very first draft of the video it's always really weak so now we're gonna be acquiring a future third round pick from the anaheim ducks you could basically view this as us trading two seventh D potential players away for a third round pick. I'll take it. We also get Adam Henrique's contract, but obviously he's not going to be coming back for next season. So when it comes to the moves we're making during the re-sign phase, not too much is going to be happening. But like Lazard, I would like to bring you back, but I feel like this is too steep of a price for you, even for what you provide to this team. So I think we're going to let you walk. That's actually a lie. We're going to qualify you as an RFA and then trade you away. Also, Spence, you played some decent minutes for us last season, so we're going to be bringing you back at just a little over $2 million for the next four years. And then Gunstrom, I'm not going to be giving you an extension here. We're just going to be qualifying you as an RFA because just under $2 million for a 79 overall. Yeah, that's a bit wild. 
And then of course, we're also gonna be bringing that AD overall defenseman onto the team. That's a no-brainer. So now that the re-sign phase is complete, it's extension time, and Caden Gooley, I have no clue why you would accept this deal, but here's four million for the next six seasons. That's an absolutely incredible contract right there. Lafreniere, we're also gonna be locking you up to a pretty decent deal. We're doing eight years at $1 million. I will never complain about a contract like that. So after re-signing a couple players and giving out some extensions, there's one thing that this team's still missing, and that's a goaltender. And these guys right here, they're not going to cut it. I mean, Jonathan Quick as the backup could be the move, but we need a superstar goaltender, and that means we're going to have to make some trades. Okay, so as we know, this team needs a goaltender, and Matt Wall, we actually don't really need you now that we acquired that left defenseman, because our defensive pairings are basically set. And Brant Clark, he's going to be stepping into the lineup this season. So you, Gunstrom, and a seventh round pick is going to be sent over to the Buffalo sabers and we're picking up lukanen now yuko pekka lukanen for some reason he's an 85 overall 25 years old i don't recall him having this high of an overall but he does right now so we're going to pick him up from the buffalo sabers he's going to be our starting goaltender and potentially our future goaltender especially with the contract that he's on so over the past couple of rebuilds i've done i've noticed that sean monahan usually turns into an absolute beast so here's 3.3 for the next four seasons by next season he's probably going to be up to an 85 overall if he's playing on the top six and even if he's not playing on the top six that's not a bad contract for a third line guy and to finish the signings off here i think we are going to go with jonathan quick we'll sign him to a one-year contract at 1.9 million he'll be the backup for us i can't really complain with that we'll bring him back for one more year we'll bring him back for one last dance so this is what we're looking like for season number two kopitar byfield and kem fiel on the first line then it's going to be kirby dog pierre luc dubois and kaliev on the second the reason that pierre luc dubois is going to be playing here is he has an incredible line fit and i'm hoping that this might be the season where he turns it up he's dropped to an 82 overall i don't know how we declined after we gave him second line minutes last season but you know what he's gonna get one more chance if he can't succeed here then we're gonna be trading him away i mean that's actually a lie because i did say i'm gonna hold on to him for the next eight years but yeah we'll figure out something to do with pierre luc dubois maybe he can be a bottom six piece or something but at eight million dollars we need you to develop the bottom six here isn't too bad alex newhook you're gonna play some third pairing minutes trevor moore philip deneau this isn't too bad here defensively this rookie alongside drew Doughty is gonna be incredible a plus five boost and then clark and mikey anderson are holding it down the second line the third pairing is pretty solid as well. Caden Gooley, Spence. Yeah, we're looking great for the future. And on top of that, we've got Yuko Pekka Lukanen. He's an 85 overall. Jonathan Quick's going to be backing him up this season. We're definitely a playoff team. Are we a top 10 team in the league? Absolutely not. But we've definitely made some great progression here. Now, I'm fully expecting this team to be taking some steps in the right direction here. So we're going to simulate up to the trade deadline and then we're going to make some moves. Because clearly, we're going to be a good team this season and we're definitely making the playoffs. So I had a feeling the Kings would be a good team this season. But sixth in the entire league with a 37 23 and 3 record i was not expecting the offense is looking not too bad for this team 3.37 goals per game while the defense definitely needs some work 3.02 allowed if we can clean up that defense we'll be the best in the entire league well maybe not the best because detroit's absolutely rolling right now they're a tank now i don't care about these numbers right here i only care about one pierre de luc dubois 82 overall and he has 50 points in 63 games he's finally living up to the hype and actually producing for once as long as he can improve to an 85 overall and get his trade value up a little bit we're going to be in a really good position with this team the goaltending yuko pekka lukanen i know we just acquired you and you have some pretty solid numbers here but there's a very very good chance you're about to get traded here because there's somebody on the trade block and he'd be a massive upgrade from you and if you're wondering who that player is it's Igor Shosturkin. There's a very good probability that we trade for Igor Shosturkin right now. So regarding a trade for Shosturkin, could it be as simple as this? A first round pick for next season and Yuko Pekalukinen. I'm going to offer that over. They're saying no, but I actually think we're really close when it comes to trade value. I know they said we weren't close, but I feel like we actually are really close. So maybe a third round pick can be the difference maker. If they accept this after I added a third round pick, then they're just kind of bugging. I'm going to send that over. They're not interested, but I'm going to make you guys interested. We're getting this deal done. So do we have any good young players that we could offer over? We do have this young guy in the AHL, so I'll add him into the deal. Alex Lafreniere, I might add you into this deal as well. So all of this for Igor Sesterik, and we're taking out Lafreniere, but maybe that prospect can be the difference maker. We're not going to be able to get this deal done. What else do I need to throw in? I'll throw in another third round pick if I have to. So here's another third rounder from LA. All of this is going to be sent over for Igor Shosturkin. We really got this deal done. Okay, we have Shosturkin for this season, and I'm definitely bringing him back next season. There's no doubt about it. He's our man. Now, I feel like it should go without saying that's going to be the only move we make here, unless I can find somebody on a one-year deal that's incredibly cheap, but I don't think we're going to be able to. 
So yeah, that's gonna be the lone move we make here. I mean, Kuzmenko at 50% retained for the bottom six could be the move. Even Sharon Govich at 50% retained. That could also be another interesting move. Okay, so this right here is very weird for Shesterkin. His asking price is a one-year deal at 5.9 million. If we do any more than that, then we're getting into the $9 million range. So I don't think we're gonna re-sign him here. We're gonna wait till the offseason. No matter what happens, Shesterkin is gonna be rejoining this team. But right now, I don't really wanna offer him a contract like that because it doesn't really make sense for either side. Okay, so after the trade deadline, I don't know how it's possible, but Shesterkin actually made us a worse team. We're finishing 10th here with a four. 45, 31, and 6 record. Shesterkin, I need to know what your numbers were. There is no reason that we should have dropped to 10th in the entire league. Kopitar, 80 points. You're leading the way. Not too bad. Kemfiel is 75. Kaliev, he's got 71 points. Yeah, it's all great and everything. But Shesterkin, what did you do since joining this team? Bro, could you not stop a puck or something? An 879 and a 388. An 879 and a 388. You're kidding me, right? You're 29 years old, you're a 91 overall, an elite goaltender, one of the best in the entire game, and you had an 879 and a 388. I'm going to assume that these numbers are about to improve in the postseason. I'm going to assume you're going to go up to a goals against of 0.1 and a save percentage of a 99.9. .9. You're going to save every single shot except for one. I still have to give you an extension. What are you going to be looking for right here? Like hypothetically, if I gave you an extension, we're going to do multiple years here. Two years at 5.9 million. Now I am not going to cap here. Three years at $6 million because he wants 6.8. We could probably get him for $6 million. That will keep him until he's 32 years old. A deal like this keeps until he's 33. At that point, he's going to start declining. A 91 overall goaltender for that price. I think we're actually going to do that. So we're going to do a four-year extension with Igor Shesterkin. We're going to assume this season was a fluke. We're doing 6.7 for the next four years. That will keep him around for the rest of his prime. I feel like this move should be an absolute no-brainer for us. It's Igor Shesterkin. He's going to win us games. Well, I mean, he should win us games. He clearly didn't do that. We're taking on the San Jose Sharks in the first round. Igor, I need you to go on some crazy run here. Like real talk, you had an 879 and a 388. How is that even possible for Igor Shesterkin? He's accepting the contract. You'll love to see it. We're losing game one. We're losing game two. Luckily, we're winning game three. And that's going to be a shutout from Shesterkin. Game five is a massive one. We got to be taking that one. We're winning that one four to one. And we're going to close this out in six games, ideally winning four straight games. All right, Shesterkin's locked in and we're ready for a Stanley Cup. All right, so Shesterkin's on a bit of a heater right now. We're looking for that to continue into the second round here we have the minnesota wild if we're able to get past minnesota we're taking on colorado in the conference finals because respectfully ain't no way arizona's making it there in year number two the year 2025 and the arizona coyotes are in the conference finals that's not happening okay yeah so we're not going to talk about what happened here shastrikin does not know how to save a puck anymore that man does not know how to stop them i don't know what just happened here but we're out in the second round we got swept good thing i said if we beat the minnesota wild we would take on the colorado avalanche because we did not beat minnesota that is tough like i can't believe that just happened minnesota's winning the stanley cup that's great um yeah i do not know what we're gonna do with shesterkin that man sucks now okay we're not looking at any of these numbers here because none of them really matter goaltending is what really matters okay shesterkin i kind of take it back because a 912 and a 272 isn't actually completely awful you did drop to an 88 overall though you dropped three overalls already now I'm incredibly scared. If you lose your X factors, we're going to have to trade you immediately. I mean, that's a lie. We'll ride out your contract. But bro, how are you dropping three overalls? Okay, this right here, these are things you love to see. Pierre-Luc Dubois is up to an 87 overall. We're set for the future. He's turned into a top six guy for us. We can actually rely on him now. All right, I have a plan here. It's a bit risky, but I'm going to bank on the Boston Bruins completely falling apart next season. So we're going to acquire their first round pick. In the process, they're also going to be giving us a third round pick. So basically, it's the 22nd overall over to the Boston Bruins for a future first round pick and a future third. Okay, we're not going to be able to get the future third rounder. So we're just going to go first round pick for first round pick. Boston, you're going to fall apart next season. I'm looking at this core you have right here. They're aging out. Like Brad Marchand, he's not a 92 overall. Kempe, I have no clue why you're on this team but for some reason you are a lot of these guys are coming back next season they're going to be a good team but you know what 
we're going to trade for Linus Allmark or Jeremy Swayman, whoever is left, and then we're going to flip them to another team. We're going to leave Boston with no goaltending. Chess, not checkers. I mean, I'm not going to do all that. That's way too much work. But yeah, we're going to bank on Boston completely falling apart. Also, I've taken a look at what's in the draft here, and there's absolutely no good players. So we're acquiring a future third and sixth round pick from the Anaheim Ducks for all these picks right here. So when it comes to extensions, Blake Lazotte's going to be the only big one. We'll bring him back for the next two years at $1 million. And then I gave a couple contracts to some RFAs here. Other than that, we're not making any big moves. And Jonathan Quick, we're going to be walking away from you. I honestly expected you to retire, but I guess you're not. I mean, do we just bring Jonathan Quick back for one more year and then he can retire as a part of the LA Kings? That actually just could be the move. So Jonathan quick what do you want for an extension here we can do 1.1 for next season that's actually not too bad for an 82 overall even that's good enough for a backup role and Blake Lazat we also have to give you a bit more money because you're unhappy so you're getting 1.1 as well as long as both of you guys accept these deals then we're gonna be in a good spot okay so we do have to give out some extensions here and obviously we're gonna be bringing back Kirby Doc and obviously Brant Clark's gonna be coming back Kirby Doc we can probably do five years here we can get you for probably about 5.4 million so Kirby Doc we're gonna do 5.5 for the next five five years that's not a bad deal for you and then for brent clark we gotta do an eight-year deal with you because it's only a matter of time before drew doughty retires and for eight years we're gonna be looking at 4.8 million that's an absolute steal meanwhile kopitar i would like to bring you back your 90 overall but seven million dollars when i don't know how quickly you're gonna be declining we're gonna hold off on that deal now although we do have eight million dollars to work with here i'm actually not sure if we're gonna make any moves because the entire team's coming back a lot of the guys got even better over the off season like pierre luc dubois is an 87 he began last season at 82 this team's clearly in a better spot i mean we could pick up stick on the ice legend sam bennett He's asking for what, 6.6 .6 million? That wouldn't necessarily be the worst idea in the world because then he could technically replace Kopitar. But you know what? We're going to hold off on that for right now. We're just going to run it back with the exact same guys. I have faith in this team. We were looking pretty solid during the regular season. I mean, the playoffs though in Shesterkin, we're not going to talk about. But this team right now, I like what we're looking at. All right, so I'm going to be completely honest. This core right here is winning 55 games. There's no question about it. The defense, this is a core that can win us 55 games. I don't think anyone would argue with this. We have a fantastic defensive core here and a great forward core. The only thing that could potentially hold us back is this man right here, Igor Shesterkin. If you put up these numbers once again, we don't stand a chance at making the playoffs. I need you to go back to your elite form, go back to your 2022-2023 form when you had a 916 to 248. You know what? Actually, go back to your 2021-2022. A 934 and a 207. These numbers right here, we're winning 60 games. And anything less than those numbers right there, I'll trade you for a 60 overall. I'm not messing around. If I have to, I will trade you for a 60 overall goaltender and I'm not afraid to do it. I mean, I'm completely capping right now. Obviously, I'm not going to trade him for a 60 overall. But if he does post like an 879 and a 388 again, then yeah, we're probably going to be trading him at the trade deadline. I need Igor Shesterkin posting his best numbers ever. Well, not even best numbers ever. Just do better than what you did last season. And honestly, that's not a really high bar. All right, I have the face cam on before we even look at the record so you already know it's not that great we have a 33 23 and 7 record now it's not necessarily the worst in the world but it definitely should be a lot better where does that put us in the entire league here well we're below 10 so i'm not too happy we're 11th in the entire league and in a wild card spot that's not great. We're not looking for that. Quinton Byfield, 64 points here. That's not bad. The top six is absolutely looking phenomenal. The bottom six, maybe not the best in the world, but there's one man we need to check on, Igor Shesterkin. A 908 and a 285. This isn't too bad. I was thinking these numbers were going to be a lot worse. A 908 and a 285. That's not too bad. I was really contemplating trading you once I saw our record because I thought you were the issue. But nah, you're doing your thing. The bottom six scoring needs to step up. I mean, to be fair, the second line's not looking that great. Like, plus seven, plus seven, plus 12. The third line's not too bad. And Brant Clark, he's doing his thing. I don't really know what we should do here. I think we'll make a few small changes to the bottom six. But other than that, we're just going to ride it out with the same team. So we are going to make one trade at the trade deadline. It's going to pick up Gurionov. He's going to provide some bottom six scoring for us. He fits on the third line, and that's exactly where we need the help. So all of these draft picks right here is going to allow us to acquire them. I did look into a handful of other trades. I might have shown them, might not have. I mean, obviously, if we could get Evan Bouchard, I would trade. But look at his trade value. That's not happening. So we're not going to make any other moves other than that one. And we're going to hope that this team can continue to perform. Because honestly, I'm a bit concerned with them. I think we have a great forward core, a great defensive core. The goaltending to me is where we have the big question mark. 
Shesterkin, you should be able to be the guy, but for some reason, you're not playing like it. All right, so it wasn't a great season from the LA Kings, but it actually wasn't too bad because we are eighth in the entire league with a 43, 30, and nine record. The offense was pretty solid this season, 3.51. That actually might be one of the best offenses in the entire game. It was. However, the defense, not that great. Wait, 2.99. I feel like that's a really good defense. Where does that put us? Okay, that puts us in seventh in the entire league. So we have the third best offense and seventh best defense but we finish eighth. That makes sense. Okay. At least I know we have a really good team here. Kevin Fiala, he's leading the way. 81 points. Quinton Byfield, 79. Kopitar, 79. He's dropped to an 89 overall. I would like to bring Kopitar back for one more season, barring him asking for reasonable money. If he wants like $10 million, he's not going to be rejoining the team. Guryanov, what'd you do since joining our team? I'm expecting you to do some decent things here. 10 points in 19 games, but you're minus five. Not the best in the world. I'm expecting a bit more from you. Meanwhile, the goaltending number is Shesterkin. 36 wins, two shots, a 907 and a 292. These are great. But if we want to win a Stanley Cup, I need you to step it up and I know you can step it up. I also know you can post an 879 and a 388. Found that one out last season. No, but seriously, I'm never going to get over that horrible season from Shesterkin. And you better be locked in because we have to take on Connor McDavid and Leon dry sidle this is one team that you can't play bad defensively against if you do they're averaging seven goals a game so this team's been really hit or miss we're either playing great defensively or we're not looking too good so game five is going to be a deciding one in this series we're allowing three goals in the past two games we've only scored two goals we need the offense to wake up in game number six here we need to pick up six so unfortunately we're not going to be picking up six goals here and edmonton's going to be taking us out in a six game series keep in mind they were without evan bouchard because they qualified him as an rfa and they were never able to get a deal done so it was Connor mcdavid leon dreisaitl and that's it because at this point nuge and hyman they'd be three years older so they're like 36 and 37 respectfully yeah we literally lost to Connor mcdavid and leon dreisaitl and that was it they had nothing else all right it's time for a stick on the ice statement this team is going to go through a lot of turnover over the offseason. Drew Doughty, there's the potential that we're going to trade you away. Kopitar, you're probably not going to be coming back here. We're going to make some big moves, probably even bring in a new coach, because we have to embrace this young core here. Quinton Byfield, Brant Clark, that one rookie we picked up a couple years ago, they're the faces of this team, and I want them to lead us to greatness. We're going to bring in a new coach where those three guys have perfect line fits, and the rest of the team, we're going to build around them. Also, in case you were wondering, Vancouver finally didn't choke and won a Stanley Cup, so there is that. And once again in the playoffs, Shesterkin wasn't necessarily terrible on 913 to 286. We just didn't score goals in front of him. This is not your fault. I guess there is one notable thing that we could check out here, and that's the fact that we got the 14th overall pick from the Boston Bruins. So trading that pick we did last season in order to get the 14th, definitely worth it. Okay, so the 14th overall pick is not going to be a good prospect, and this man just got selected by Nashville. He's a 77 overall at 18 years old, and he could immediately jump to the lineup for us. Hypothetically, the 14th overall and a second rounder. Would that be enough? They're going to be saying no. I'll include a third round pick in this deal. Actually, how about the 117th? So I'll include this into the deal as well. Is that going to be enough to get this elite potential player? They're going to be saying no. I'll throw in another fourth round pick, and this is the most I'm willing to do. But if we can acquire an elite potential player for this package right here, definitely worth it. I can't believe that just got accepted. Okay, so since we just picked up that left defenseman, we really don't need Mikey Anderson anymore. So basically, I'm going to trade him away, and we're going to send him to the Seattle Kraken. We're getting these two young prospects right here. This one right here, he's a 76 overall. He's got top four potential. I don't think he's going to make the jump to the NHL immediately but maybe two years down the line he'll definitely be ready we're also going to try to pick up this 74 overall he's got medium top six potential he might be able to develop into something so i'm going to send this package over they're accepting it we're freeing up a bit of cap space but at the end of the day we got to prepare for the future and that's exactly what this move does for us we're late in the draft right now and there's no good prospects available so we're just going to get a future third round pick from the boston bruins now Anze kopitar i don't know i think we're just going to have to walk away from you here you're 38 years old you are an 88 overall so i mean like there is still value in you but we got to prepare for the future and holding on to you i think that's going to stunt this team a little bit so we're going to be walking away from kopitar we're not making any moves during the resign phase i mean we are signing these rfas but nothing major is going to be happening we're going to make some big moves during the off season and we're going to get this team ready for the future Future. no in all seriousness this man right here needs to fire his agent 5.8 for the next eight we're keeping him around for the rest of the rebuild he is 20 years old and 85 overall and he just signed for 5.8 he's just plain stupid meanwhile drew doughty 
We're not going to be bringing you back next season. This is your last year with the team. We might even trade you away while you still have a bit of trade value. Philip Deneau, you're also going to be another guy that's getting traded here because there's no point keeping you on the team for next season. All right, so since we couldn't get Kurashev, we're just going to pick up Peyton Krebs from the Buffalo Sabres. Honestly, this is a much better deal. So that's probably going to be the only move we make here. I want to get to the beginning of next season, then I'll probably make some moves because I have to know how our new coach fits with the current guys we have. If there's certain players on our team that have zero line fit whatsoever, they'll be traded away. Okay, so after making the moves we did, this team's clearly in a better spot. Quentin Byfield's going to be leading the way at a 91. He's got a superstar our x factor and on the top line with him is going to be kevin fiala and kirby doc we're going to be getting a plus two boost here on the second line we're going to be getting a plus four boost with kaliev pierre luc dubois and peyton krebs while the bomb six here it's still pretty good although i would like the fourth line to have a chemistry boost we're okay with what we have right now now defensively we do have a 77 overall in the lineup but he's going to be playing alongside brant clark as he is a perfect fit here the defense i think is actually in a better spot just because of the line fits so i'm expecting them to do some big things and in between the pipes of course we got shesterkin we're also going to mark it in we're calling him up this season he's 24 years old although he's only a 76 overall he's not getting many starts because 90 overall shesterkin is going to be playing the majority of them now we're going to simulate up to the trade deadline and then we're going to be making some moves to fill out the bottom six we're going to figure out who the weaknesses are on this team and once we know who they are we're going to be shipping them out one of the guys we're probably going to be trading away is trevor moore because we're paying him way too much for what he's providing to this team okay so right now we're 23 19 and 3 and we're clearly not playing that great zachary bull duke we're picking you up from the st louis blues for one reason and you're good at defense and you're going to play some good bottom six minutes for us and you're going to play good defense on the bottom six basically all i'm saying is join this team and play very good defense is this really not enough i thought philip to know in a sixth and seventh rounder would be enough here's a fourth round pick is that going to be the difference then they're still saying no here a fourth and sixth round pick i mean i'll throw in whatever draft picks you want i just want zachary bull duke for the bottom six so we're making that trade there but we're not quite done yet because we need some more help for the bottom six and charlie coyle you're gonna be the other guy that we're going to acquire here that's going to bring in two really good players for our bottom six and i think that's going to help the defense a lot and we're going to be fine because right now our bottom six is not playing good defense they're not scoring a lot of goals but on top of that they're not playing good defense so if you guys play a bit of defense then we'll be set okay so this is what we've done with the bottom six here sean monahan bull duke charlie coyle lafreniere madden and more we're getting a plus one boost here and a plus two boost here i think that's going to solve our problems because the scoring on the rest of these lines perfectly fine okay i simulated right to the end of the season because i'm so confused with this la kings team i feel like i built a really good team here but for some reason we're 14th in the entire league with a 40 33 and 9 record the offense isn't really scoring goals while the defense is definitely not stopping any i'm just so confused because i feel like this is a good team zachary bull duke and charlie coyle they were great pickups when i picked them up and they finished with positive plus minuses so clearly this team's doing pretty solid kem fiala 73 points here kirby doc 67 okay we did not score goals that was the main issue this season did we have anyone with a negative plus minus a couple guys here on the bottom six but zachary bull duke Duke, what yours look like since joining the team because that's a bit different you were plus eight since joining the team so you were plus eight we know charlie coyle had a positive plus minus our fourth line is what really held us back our fourth line and third defensive pairing but considering everyone else on the team had a positive plus minus and everyone else was looking really good does that make sense for us to finish 14th in the entire league i don't think so the goaltending numbers here shesterkin 35 wins a 905 save percentage and a 295 goals against not gonna lie you just haven't been that man for us I was expecting you were going to be the savior of this team, but it really hasn't worked out for us. And to make things even worse, we got a rematch against the Edmonton Oilers, but this time around, Evan Bouchard's back. So we already know how this is going to go. All right, so we won the first two of the games. Things are looking absolutely fantastic. We're going to ignore the fact that the series is tied right now, but we are bouncing back here in game number five. We're winning that one four to one. Are we going to be able to stop Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl? It looks like we are, and we're off to the second round here. We got the Vancouver Canucks. We got some momentum right now, so there's no point stopping. And we're going to keep on winning games here. Never mind, we're losing back-to-back -back games and in one of those games we're allowing eight goals so that's not really ideal we got to win a big game five game and that's exactly what we're doing game six can we close it out here unfortunately not and we're off to game seven the one thing I will say though, I'm actually happy that the LA Kings are competing with the Vancouver Canucks because Vancouver is one of the best teams in the entire league and we're showing that we can compete. So we're entering the third period. Whoever wins this is off to the conference finals. Are we going to be bouncing back big time here? Nope, we're actually not going to score a goal in the third period and neither are they. We're dropping this one two to one. That's actually a really tough way to go out because this was an incredibly close game. At least I know we can compete with the 54 win teams. This also makes me think that we're actually a better team than what our record showed. 
So yeah, we're going to make a couple moves during the offseason. We have a lot of money to work with here. Not really too sure what those moves are going to be, but we're certainly going to be a better team. Then again, what am I yapping about? I've said for the past four years, we're going to be a better team. We're going to be a better team. We're going to be a better team. And we're in the year 2027. And guess what? We're not a better team. I think we actually might be worse record wise. Yeah, some big changes have to happen here. Whether that's bringing in a new coach for like the third year in a row, or that's just bringing in some more superstar players, something's got to change for us. Now, I think I know what our move has to be. We just have to bring in another superstar player because I don't think Quentin Byfield's enough. Like, look at these numbers from Shesterkin. Seven wins, one shot, a 934 and a 240. Plain and simple, we're bringing in some superstar goal scorers. Okay, I think this could be the wave from now on. The Philadelphia Flyers just selected this man 11th overall. He's a 70 overall, top six potential, 18 years old. When you're a 70 overall at 18 years old, more than likely you're going to develop into a really good player because you're a high overall to begin your career. This 21st overall pick, I'm going to be drafting somebody that's like a 61 overall with top 6 potential if I'm lucky. However, I could just trade the 21st overall pick over to the Philadelphia Flyers, get the 11th overall pick, and a future 3rd round pick. I'm going to be doing this a lot more frequently in my videos from now on, because this move right here is an absolute steal for us. We're getting the 11th overall pick and a future 3rd round pick for the 21st overall. Like, that doesn't even make sense. After trading that first round pick, we did have one other pick, and we are going to be securing a low lead potential defensive defenseman, but at a 49 overall, I can't see him developing in time. All right, so we have to start handing out extensions, and we have a lot of money to work with here. We're starting with Peyton Krebs, and I think we're going to do a 6x6, six six, so that'll keep him around for the rest of the rebuild. He's an 86 overall. He's got an X factor now. He's going to be an important part to our team. Drew Doughty, we're going to be letting him walk. He's dropped to an 82 overall. It doesn't make any sense to bring him back. Charlie Coyle, you're 35 years old. I'm not bringing you back either. Gurionov, I might bring you back depending on your asking price you did have a decent fit with this team but i feel like you're gonna be asking for too much money i mean 1.7 million for the next two we can make it work madden you play some good fourth line mints for us so here's 1.5 for the next two and then i'm gonna make a lot more small signings here but i'm not gonna show you all of them also gurionov did decline the extension i gave him so we're not bringing him back to the team i'm not doing more than 1.8 million or whatever i offered him so clearly this team has a lot of issues and scoring is one of them dylan gunther 5.1 million and you're a sniper and 87 overall i feel like you'd be a massive pickup for this team i'm going to be trading our first round pick for you i really thought one first round pick would be enough but i guess not we're gonna have to throw something else into this deal maybe a fifth rounder or something it's not going to cost us too much more so there you go you got a fifth rounder as well and we got dylan gunther so we got to change things up big time here and kevin fiala you're just one of the guys that's going to get shipped out here i'm sending you over to the carolina hurricanes along with a third and fifth round pick and we're going to be picking up marty natchez natchez byfield and dylan gunther on the first line together that's a recipe for success but we're not done there. The moves are going to continue. All right, so the moves are going to keep coming here. Mason Marchman, we're picking you up from the Dallas Stars. You're an 86 overall, but most importantly, you can fit on our bottom six here, and I think you can provide some good depth scoring for us. We're also going to be getting a third round pick here. Kirby Doc, now that we've got Martin Natchez, we really don't need you for the first line, so we're making this deal. Okay, so this move is just going to be a smaller one, but it is going to help the fourth line a little bit. We're picking up Berard here. He's a 79 overall playmaker, but he fits on the bottom six, and that's where he's going to be playing. He'll play some fourth line minutes for us. I feel like he's going to be a nice upgrade for this team now that we've made all those moves to the forward core let's upgrade the defensive core okay so this move right here is just gonna be bringing in brett pesci on a one-year contract he's an 86 overall he can fit on the top four and that's exactly where we need to play him a second rounder madden and a fourth rounder is gonna be sent over to carolina in order to get this deal done they're gonna be saying no but i'll just throw a seventh rounder in and that's gonna be the difference maker so here's one seventh round pick and we got this deal done okay so we actually have a lot of money left over here so we're bringing in two defensemen on one-year deals it's starting with john marino we're doing 7.4 for next season and then the next guy being brought in, that's going to be Brady Shea. We're doing 7.3 for next season. We're going to bring both of these guys onto the team. I'm actually going to do 7.4. Our defensive core is going to be insane. We have a fantastic goaltender. If he plays up to his potential, this team should be a top five team. Okay, I am not kidding when I say this. This will turn from a 10-year rebuild to a five-year rebuild if we're not top five. Quentin Byfield, Dylan Gunther, Marty Natchez, Kaliev Dubois, Peyton Krebs. A plus five boost here, a plus three boost here. We're getting a plus two boost on this line and a plus one boost on the fourth line the defense absolutely spectacular plus two plus three plus three the lowest overall being an 80 but he's got an x factor he's only 19 years old and then the goaltending here we have 90 overall shesterkin 55 wins top five in the league nothing less
Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we are going to give out some extensions. Zachary Bolduc, five years at $3 million. I'll definitely take that deal. And then that's probably going to be the only move we make because I don't really know if I want to bring back Mason Marchman. Depending on what he's asking for, $7.6 million is not happening. Brett Pesci, he's probably not going to come back. John Marino's not going to come back. Sean Wanahan probably won't unless he's asking for like $3 million. 3.5 is not necessarily the end of the world. We might be bringing Sean Monahan back. Trevor Moore, he's not going to be coming back. So we're going to lose a lot of guys, but we do have $30 million in cap space. So we will make some moves accordingly next season. All right. I'm happy to say things are finally going our way. A 40, 17 and six record. We're third in the entire league right now. 3.76 goals per game. While the defense best in the entire league, 2.56. This is what I've been waiting for right here. This team's finally playing up to expectations and we're ready to win a Stanley Cup. And out of all players to be leading the way, Pierre-Luc Dubois, you heard that right, 24 goals, 42 helpers, 66 points. Marty Natchez, he's got 66. Dylan Gunther, 57. Kaliev's got 56. Quinton Byfield, I'm expecting more. I'm just going to keep it 1,000. While the goaltending numbers, these are incredible. Shesterkin, never fold. Keep playing like this and we'll be bringing home a Stanley Cup. Also, shout out to Markkanen. 10 wins here, a 920 and a 245. I can't complain about that in the slightest. They're going to be saying no to this deal right here. So I actually think we're just going to pass on making any deals here at the trade deadline. Unless I can find something else. Because right now, all we need really is a playmaker for the bottom six. And I can't really find one at a reasonable price. Well, I'm happy to say we're going to be doing a 10-year rebuild here. We're third in the entire league with a 51-24-7 record. An offense that's looking pretty good, but that defense, absolutely spectacular. The best in the entire league. But even the offense right here, 3.55, I'm still expecting more from you guys. Because where's that person in the entire league here? I think that would be sixth. I guess that's not too bad, but considering all the offensive firepower we have here, we should be better. I'm not going to lie, I find it very funny that Pierre-Luc Dubois is leading the way with 83 points here. Martin Natchez, he had a great year. Dylan Gunther, 71 points. I can't complain about that. Quentin Byfield, I will complain about 62 points. You should be doing better than this, plain and simple. But yeah, Pierre-Luc Dubois out of all players leading the way. Who would have thought? And the goaltending situation here, we already know what that's looking like. Shesterkin, 36 wins, 6 shots, a 919 to 254. These numbers right here are absolutely incredible. Hold it down the postseason i need a great postseason overview and then we'll be stanley cup champs and it all starts here the first round we're taking on the seattle kraken it's time for this team to live up to the hype and stop disappointing absolutely everyone so let's get to work here let's have the la kings absolutely lock in no messing around the first round ideally we sweep the seattle kraken unfortunately that's not going to be happening here but we do have a 3-1 series lead and we're about to close out in game number five here LA's off to the second round. They're dominating the NHL right now. You'll love to see it. All right, so this is the biggest matchup we've ever been in. The LA Kings taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Two fantastic teams. The Edmonton Oilers have been able to beat us a few times so far, but they've never seen this LA team before. We know how to get past them this time. Well, I went ahead and simulated the first four games thinking nothing bad could really happen to us. We're down 3-1 in the series now. So we got to make some crazy comeback and that's not happening. We're done in five games. This team just never shows up. Okay, so given everything that happened and the fact that we lost to the Edmonton Oilers in the second round, I'm not happy about that. But this team did finally play good for once. We could finish top three in the entire league, but still, we haven't made it to the conference finals yet, or I don't believe we have. We might have. It's been a couple days since I recorded the first four seasons. All I know is LA's been a complete disappointment so far. This season, we're actually looking pretty good. The young guys are going to continue to develop here. We got to bring in a couple defensemen. We should be a better team next season. That's the plan, at least. At the end of the day, it's pretty simple why we didn't beat the Edmonton Oilers. It came down to defense and goaltending. Shesterkin, I've lost faith in you, but we're going to keep running it back with you because you're a 90 overall and you are one of the best goaltenders in the league. But what's going to take to win a Stanley Cup with you? Because this right here, I'm getting sick and tired of it. Then again, you haven't really been that bad in the postseason. Your numbers have just been hit and miss. Actually, this is by far the worst postseason you've had. Last season, definitely should have won. And then the two prior to that, not bad seasons. But this one right here, this ain't it. Similar situation to the last draft, except this guy's even better from the Philadelphia Flyers. He's a 76 overall at 18 years old. He was drafted 9th overall. I'm trading the 57th overall and the 161st in order to get this man. They're going to be saying no, but we just have to throw a 7th rounder in the mix. Honestly, this deal is absolutely ridiculous. And I actually don't want to use a 7th rounder. Do we have any prospects that you want? So here's a prospect with top 9 potential. I think that will be enough to get this deal done. There we go. We just got the 9th overall pick. 76 overall, 18 years old. We'll give him one year to develop 
develop in the AHL or in juniors. And then that man's going to be a beast for us. So we have $32 million to work with. We're not going to be bringing everyone back here, but we are going to be bringing some of the young guys. And that's going to start with Berard. We're bringing him back. 82 overall, 25 years old. Yeah, that's a must. So we're going to do a five-year contract here at 2.5 million for a third line guy. That's an absolute steal. Brett Pesci, I believe we could bring you back for one more season and it would make sense for this team. So can we do one year at like maybe 5.7 million? You played some great second pairing minutes. So one year, 5.7, we'll try to get it done. Sean Monaghan, I would definitely be willing to do a deal like this. $3 million for the next two years. You're an 85 overall. You play a great role in this team. I want to keep you around for sure. Mason Marchman, you also had a fantastic season, but at 5.2 million, I'm not really too sure if you're worth it. If we could do two years to say 4.8 million, then I would be willing to do a deal like that. So we'll try 4.8 for the next two. John Marino, I don't think there is a world in which we bring you back on a one-year deal at like 5.8 million. So we're just going to be walking away from you. All right, no messing around with Sean Monaghan he's saying no to 3.1 let's just do 3.3 for the next two that's guaranteed to bring him back sean monahan welcome back to the team so marino more brady shea and then spence all of you guys are gonna be walking okay so in any normal situation i would trade kaliev away because he would have a ton of trade value but two million dollars and he's playing second line minutes for us he's an 87 overall we have to ride that contract out and then maybe we'll ride it out and then re-sign him next season then trade him away do a bit of a sign and trade that could be the move flood i do want to give you a long-term deal but this ain't it plain and simple i'm not giving an 82 overall 10 million dollars okay igor shesterkin i'm giving you this season if we do not win a stanley cup with you this season or you played bad in the postseason i'm not bringing you back plain and simple i need you to perform when it matters most i need this team to win a stanley cup with you in between the pipes given me saying that i feel like i should give you an extension but you are 32 years old i don't know what the declines can be like for you so we'll write out your contract for this season and then we'll see what happens okay now that i'm aware of how much money we have john marino you are going to come back here similar to last season we're doing a one-year deal 7.4 million i did not realize that right now we have 19 million dollars in cap space i thought we were more cap tight than that so yeah john marino you're definitely coming back to the team no doubt about it and then for our final move we're bringing in adam rajishka to help the bottom six now he's definitely going to help the lines on this team okay so by rights we actually should be a much better team this season because not only did a lot of the young guys develop here but we actually have better line fits on the top six a plus five boost and a plus five boost the lowest overall being peyton krebs at an 85 but he's a fantastic playmaker for dubois and kaliev the bottom six here i can't complain about rajishka is going to be leading the way here we already know what this man does okay i'm done making rajishka jokes but here's the defense here i mean that's actually looking pretty solid the lowest overall being 83 ghouli marino's returning for another this season so is brett pesci this defense is fantastic we already know what they can do the goaltending shesterkin your 91 overall hold it down be that guy for this season allow us to win a stanley cup it's all on you okay so the more i've been thinking about it kaliev we could give you an extension here you're an 87 overall and at 6.7 million you're actually worth it at that price we could probably even do a bit less we can probably do 6.6 .6. So 6.6 .6 for the next four years that keeps you around for the rest of the rebuild. You're a great piece to the top six and we actually should keep you around. You're one of the most important pieces here. All right, so the LV Kings had a terrible start to the season, but we're still fifth in the entire league here with a 38, 21 and five record. The offense is doing its normal thing while the defense taking a slight step back 2.81, but that's still one of the best in the entire game. So I'm not too concerned here. Now I believe collectively the team actually has a better plus minus this season. So I think we're actually better off. The team's more balanced. Peyton Krebs is leading the way 60 points here. Natchez has got 59, Kaliev's got 57. The entire team's performing. I can't really complain too much here. Shesterkin, I will complain about your numbers though. Bro, 31 wins, four shouts is great, but a 906 and a 291. That's just not it. So when it comes to making a move here, I'm not too sure what we're going to do. I think it's going to be either Adam Pellock or Ryan Pollock. They're two old players, but they would be a massive help to this team. Then again, maybe the bottom six could use a bit of help. I'm not really too sure what the move is going to be here. So unfortunately, we're not going to be acquiring Jacob Chicken because we have no money to send over to Ottawa. And I don't really want to acquire some player that's on a massive contract because even we don't have that much. We have $6 million we can work with. So I have to acquire a $6 million player, then send him over to Ottawa so they have enough money to send us Jacob Chicken. In. This is exactly why we need three team trades because this right here is really stupid okay i was looking for players that we could pick up in order to trade and i found alex kalorin here he's 39 years old and he's a 65 overall and he hasn't retired yet he's only getting paid one million dollars but i just thought i'd point that out how did this man secure a one-way deal for one year at one million dollars when he's a 65 overall how is that even possible i gotta give it to alex kalorin honestly i'm incredibly impressed with that okay i was even going to try something like this a seventh rounder over to the san jose sharks we would take on dimitri orloff 
Ross contract at 5.6 million. He's a 78 overall, but you'd have to give us a second rounder in order to do that. But then San Jose is below the minimum salary cap. So yeah, we're not going to be acquiring any players here. We're just going to simulate to the end of the season. We are a top five team, so we're going to close the season out strong. So I'm happy to say it's been back-to-back -back seasons now where the LA Kings have been a top team. We're fifth in the entire league with a 48, 28, and six record. I can't complain about that. An offense that's one of the best in the entire league, 3.5 goals per game. Well, defense, it's got to be at least top five. 2.82, that's got to be one of the best. Third in the entire league, this team's ready to compete. I mean, to be fair, we've also been ready to compete for the past five years, but we never compete. So this team better show up when it matters most. The scoring here, can't complain. We have some great depth scoring. And the goaltending, we already know Shesterkin's the man for us. 37 wins, four shots, a 903 and a 296. We actually don't know if he's the man for us. He has to prove it this season. If you win us the Stanley Cup, you're coming back to the team. If we lose in the first round, I'm shipping you out as fast as I possibly can. We're taking on the Vancouver Canucks in the first round. No more disappointment. It's time for this team to stand tall. All right, I'm so serious when I say if this team loses in the first round and we get swept, I'm going to trade absolutely every single player here. We need to start performing. We're actually about to sweep Vancouver. This team's finally playing up to expectations. We swept the Canucks and we're off to the second round. I'm actually looking forward to the Stanley Cup run. Okay, we have to face our biggest ops in the second round. We have played Edmonton way too often in this video and 99.9% .9 of the time they beat us. We got to beat them for once. This has to be that 1% of the time where we actually win. And LA, I am so serious. I can't deal with the disappointment any longer. We have faced Edmonton way too many times and they beat us every single time. And it looks like it might be this time as well. Maybe not. I thought we were going to be down 3-1 in the series, but we actually kept it even. So game five is going to be a big one. We're winning that one 5-1. Can we finally take down the Edmonton Oilers and make it to the conference finals? We're back. This team's ready to compete. They're ready for Stanley Cups. Shesterkin knows what's on the line. So not only are we four games away from the Stanley Cup final, but it might happen. The LA Kings and Igor Shesterkin taking on the New York Rangers. If Shesterkin can finally win this team a Stanley Cup against his former team, that would be a storybook ending for us. But first, we have to beat the Colorado Avalanche, and this team is known for choking, so we better show up when it matters most. We split the series so far. Game 5 is going to be a big one. Is it going to be the deciding one? It looks like it is a deciding one because we're taking the lead in the series. Game 6, it all comes down to this. Never mind. It's not going to come down to this because we need Game 7. So here we go. Game 7. Winner's going to make it to the Stanley Cup Final. Oh yeah, we got this locked down. I'm going to simulate the rest of the game. We're off to the Stanley Cup Final. A 6-3 victory. I don't know who we're taking on though because Tampa and the Rangers also went to a game seven. All I know is we're in the Stanley Cup final and we're not here to mess it up. We're going to win this. So here we go. The Stanley Cup final. Unfortunately, we're not going to be taking on the New York Rangers. We're taking on the 41 win Tampa Bay Lightning. We're not losing the Stanley Cup to a 41 win team. I'm just stating that right now. We have gone through way too much to get to this point. I refuse to lose to a 41 win team. I mean, granted, if you make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final, I don't really care how many wins you have. You're clearly a good team. So we got to simulate the first four games here and complete the sweep. Yeah, this is light work for us. We actually completed a sweep. Okay, we're Stanley Cup champs. That was simple. Now, real talk, I honestly never thought I'd see the day where the LA Kings are Stanley Cup champions once again. The start of this rebuild was really tough, but these past two years, this team's been locked in. And the real question is, what did Shesterkin's numbers look like? He might be coming back to the team. 16 wins, two shots, a 9-12 and a 2-63. Shesterkin, welcome back. But maybe not because you are 33 years old. How many years are left in this rebuild? I think four. Do we keep you on this team till you're 37? That's a bit of a risk if you ask me. But then again, you did win us the Stanley Cup, so it might be worth bringing you back. So shout out to Drew Doughty because in the year 2029, it looks like he's finally going to be retiring. But the reason I came to look at the retired players is this man right here, Alex Kalorn. He's finally called it a career. 39 years old, 65 overall. How you made it till the year 2029, I have no clue. But shout out to you because you did. All right, this might be the greatest strat of all time. The 32nd overall, so the last pick in the first round. Over to the Calgary Flames. We're getting the ninth overall pick, who's a 73 overall at 18 years old. He's got top four potential, and we're also getting a third round pick in the mix. It makes no sense why they're accepting this deal. You're getting a worse prospect, and you have to give up a third rounder. And then we're going to make another trade here. We're going to the Montreal Canadiens. I think this guy was drafted 15th overall. It was actually 12th overall. He's a 67 overall, top six potential. I want to make this deal for sure. They're going be saying no here i'll throw in a seventh rounder or something we'll be able to get it done maybe a fifth rounder will be enough because i think it's going to cost more than a seventh i think we're actually getting a bit finessed here but you know what we got another good young prospect he's going to develop into a great player for us smart move after smart move okay so igor shesterkin i did say if you had a fantastic season i would bring you back and if you want to stand the cup i'd bring you back but you have dropped two overalls at 33 years old and i don't really want to commit 7.8 million dollars to you so i think we're going to be letting you walk here this might be a very 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 bad decision 
but I think it's what we have to do. Also, Marino, Pesci, and Rajishka, all these guys are going to be walking. And then Flood, I'm just going to qualify you as an RFA and trade you away because Bro wants way too much money here. $9 million. You're an 85 overall. You're a great player and all. But even still, I just feel like that's not worth it. But you know what? I should consider there's only four years left in the rebuild here. So maybe $8 million per year for the next four isn't that bad of a contract. So he's going to be accepting that deal right here. I guess we're going to be bringing Flood back. Meanwhile, these three guys were letting all of them walk. It's just Sturkin. We could do a two-year contract with you, but I'm just nervous about how much you're going to be declining. So if we did two years at $6.8 million, I would feel confident doing a deal like that because even if you decline a lot, you're still going to be good for the next two years. It looks like Shesterkin's going to be coming back to the team here. We have $14 million to work with. We're only losing three players over the offseason, and we do have some good young guys coming up. This team's going to be good next season once again. Okay, this seems really stupid, but I also think it'd be really funny, and I don't believe there's any chance that he would accept a deal like this. But hypothetically, Miro Heiskin, here's all the money we have left. One year, $14.8 million. All we have to do is fill out one defensive spot. If he joins this team, we're hoisting another Stanley Cup, plain and simple. Ain't no way, we just got Miro Heiskin in. Okay, we're definitely winning a Stanley Cup this season no doubt about it. All right, so we're well aware that this team can win a Stanley Cup because they did it last season. One of the greatest top sixes of all time. You're not beating this. And the bottom six, absolutely incredible. The fact that we have all 80 overalls here and an 84 overall Sean Monaghan in the fourth line, that tells you we're a good team. And the defense, yeah, we picked up Miro Heiskanen. He's going to be playing some second pairing minutes here. Like if we have him playing on the first line, he does get a plus five boost. But then we got guys out of position. This is just the simplest thing to do for us. Brant Clark on the first pairing, Miro Heiskanen on the second. This team's going to be perfectly fine. And the goaltending situation, Chesterkin, you still have all your X factors, all your superstar factors. You're an 88 overall. You won a Stanley Cup last season. Winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, it's not that hard of a task. Let's just go ahead and do it. And also through giving out that Miro Heiskanen deal, we have no money to work with here. So we're just going to simulate right to the end of the season. We're not going to be making any trades here unless we absolutely have to. But you know what? I think this team's going to be perfectly fine. We have the best offense in the entire league, the best defense by far. We're bringing home a Stanley Cup, plain and simple. Nothing to worry about. Honestly, I'm really disappointed that we can't finish first in the entire league. We're second here with a 55-22-5 record, the best season we've ever had, 3.74 goals per game, while the defense 2.8. We were fantastic, but Florida was literally better than us in every single aspect of the game. So if we match up against them, it's going to be a tough matchup. Natchez is going to be having a big year. He's picking up 91 points, but Quinton Byfield over a point a game. Is that the first time in your career you've ever been above a point a game? It looks like it. It took you this many years to finally excel, but here you are, 86 points. You'll love to see it. Dylan Gunther, 82. He's dominating like usual. While well, the goaltending numbers, I already know these are going to be great. Shesterkin, 42 wins, one shot, a 907 and a 276. D declined during the season. It looks like he did a little bit, dropping to an 87 overall, but I already know we can win with this man. We were able to once before. Now it's time to do it again. And let's get ourselves warmed up in this first round matchup. We got the Vegas Golden Knights to take on. Normally, I would say Vegas is going to be a tough matchup for us, but we were second in the entire league. We're taking on a wild card team here. We should be all right. So Vegas isn't putting up much of a fight against us. We have a 3 1 series leading in game five we're looking to close this one out hopefully we close out in game six though because i don't want to be blowing a 3-1 series lead thankfully a 5-1 victory is going to be closing this series out all right so i don't think we've ever matched up against this team in the second round the edmonton oilers I'm not really too sure who's on their team like maybe Connor mcdavid's still here leon drysdale might be evan bouchard now we know for a fact all three of those guys are still here and we know for a fact that edmonton can compete with us so after winning the first two games of the series i honestly thought it was going to be a sweep but we're going to be losing two straight hopefully it's not three it's going to be three straight we got to show up in game number six I want this team to win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, and if we drop game number six here, that's not going to be happening. Are we going to be losing four in a row here? Thankfully, we're not, and we're off to game seven. So here we go, game seven. LA's taking on the Edmonton Oilers. We're picking up the first goal of the game here. We're also going to be picking up the second goal of the game. Hopefully, we can pick up the third goal of the game and make this a quick shutout. Wow, that's actually exactly what's happening. We're shutting out the Edmonton Oilers. That was pretty simple. So we were able to get past the Edmonton Oilers once again. We've made it to the conference finals. It's an all-California matchup. The LA Kings taking on the Anaheim Ducks. We already know this is going to be a competitive series but i'm looking forward to a potential stanley cup matchup either the toronto maple leafs or florida panthers that's gonna be must see hockey i mean ideally toronto beats florida because i know florida is an absolute tank right now but yeah i'm ready for anything they throw at us so the anaheim ducks can't even match up against us this is gonna be a quick five game series and we're moving off to the stanley cup final i guess it's gonna be a six game series doesn't really matter how many games it takes we're off to the stanley cup final and we're looking to repeat also florida and toronto are tied at three games apiece so that could really go either way now i really shouldn't be surprised that this matchup right 
right here. The LA Kings taking on the Florida Panthers. The top two teams in the NHL matching up against each other. Florida was better than us in every single aspect of the game. But there's one thing that we have that Florida doesn't. And that's Igor Shesterkin. He's locked in right now. And that man right there is looking to win back-to-back -back cups. We also have Miro Heiskanen, like he's a 91 overall playing on the second pairing. Defensively, we're straight. So here we go. The Florida Panthers taking on the LA Kings. This is going to be a fantastic matchup right here. Oh, no, nah. we're actually dominating right now. A 3-1 series lead. We're going to close this out in five games. I did not expect that to happen. Shesterkin was locked in. One goal allowed, zero goals allowed, two goals allowed. He was him, plain and simple. So the offense was flying once a game in the postseason. I can always rely on these guys game in and game out. Also, defensively, what did Miro Heiskanen do? Did this man just not pick up any points during the postseason here he had five assists I'm not gonna lie for a 91 overall i am expecting a bit more from you and the goaltending shesterkin he's him 16 wins two shots a 931 to 224 we're going for the three-peat next season three-peating with 35 year old igor shesterkin that's the dream right there. Okay, I'm 100% serious here. Miro Heiskanen might be coming back to the team, but he's not only does he want an extension with us, but he's also willing to accept a pretty cheap contract. So Miro Heiskanen, we're going to be looking at around 9.8 million for the next eight years with you. That will keep you around for the rest of the rebuild. That would be insane if we're actually able to keep this man. I don't know what we're going to do with the rest of the guys here. Like Mason Marchman's not coming back. Sean Monahan's not. We actually don't need to re-sign many players. I think that's the move. Miro Heiskanen is coming back for about $5 million cheaper. Yeah, we're going to win. We're going to win again next season. Plain and simple. Shout out to Miro Heiskanen. What a W man's. Okay, so I'm looking at this guy that was just drafted by the Buffalo Sabres 6th overall. He's a 76 overall, top 4 potential, 18 years old. He would be fantastic for us in probably like two seasons he'd be able to jump to the lineup. Will the 32nd overall be enough to get this deal done? They're going to be saying no. I'll take that third rounder out. Can we just go pick for prospect here? They're going to be saying no, but I think a sixth rounder will be enough to get this deal done. I'm trying to do it really quick before Calgary makes their selection. I'm sending that over. We got this deal done. That's a great prospect considering what we were going to be drafting. This is going to be the next move we make of the draft here. We're going to be picking up this prospect from the Ottawa Sanders. He was drafted 12th overall and he's a 73 overall. I'm trying something new this video where I want to acquire a bunch of really high overalls that are drafted that don't technically have a lot of trade value. This package should be enough to get the deal done. It's actually not going to be. We have to throw a 7th rounder in the mix as well. But yeah, considering what we're giving up here, I feel like this is a smart move for us. As long as these guys develop, of course. But enough making trades here. It's time to do some drafting my own. All right, so the drafting did not work out for us. We didn't get anyone higher than top four potential or top six potential. So yeah, that was a waste of three picks right there. Okay, so we're going to be giving out a couple two-way contracts and some rookie deals. But Sean Monaghan and Mason Marchman, we're going to be saying goodbye to both of you guys. You're 35 years old. Both of you declined. We're going to be bringing in some replacements. We got $13 million to work with. And yes, Miro Heiskanen did return to the team absolutely wild so we didn't really have to do anything big during the re-sign phase but now we gotta give out some extensions and dylan gunther yeah he's not doing us any solids here to be fair he also has been on a fantastic contract the last couple of years so i can't really blame him for asking for something like this so dylan gunther we are gonna be saving some money here because i'm not giving you 11 million we'll do 9.8 for the next eight Keaton Gooley, we're gonna let you walk there's just no really point to bring you back to the team we had the whole left side filled up and i don't really want to give you an extension because i know you're gonna be asking for a lot of money 5.8 million for third pairing not really worth the price. We're also giving Marcus an extension because he plays some good fourth line minutes for us. We're doing three years at 2.2 million, an absolute steal for an 82 overall. Arkipov, we're also going to be bringing you back to the team, 2.7 for the next three. You're a good third pairing guy for us, and at that price for a defenseman, that's hard to come by. Pierre-Luc Dubois, I would like to give you an extension, but we can't right now, so we're not going to worry about it. All right, so we got to bring in some guys from the bottom six, and of course, we're doing one-year deals like usual. Kuzmenko, we're starting with you. We're doing 6.3 for next season. And that's not going to be the only man joined the team on a one-year contract. We're also going to be doing our Terry Lekkonen we're doing 5.4 for next season actually why are we messing around here i'll just give you 6 million for next season then i know for a fact you're going to be joining this team also if you hold on to these x factors that would be ideal but i highly doubt that's going to be happening okay in all seriousness i have no clue how i built a core like this i know we've had a lot of money left over the past couple years but even still this forward core is absolutely fantastic zachary bull duke's the lowest overall on the top nine he's an 83 like this forward core makes absolutely no sense and then you would think with a forward core that good our defense would suck nope defense is absolutely phenomenal as well and then the goaltending we have igor shesterkin at 86 overall he's declining but he can complete the three-peat here this team has a very good chance of doing that i have to say this is probably one of the best teams i've ever built and i've built some pretty good teams but this la kings team right here 
it's got to be up there as one of my best. Now that I've said all that, watch this team not make the playoffs somehow and only get like 32 wins. So it finally happened. It might have taken us seven years, but here we are, the top of the league. We're not going to talk about how we're tied with the Edmonton Oilers in points. We're ahead of them. A 54, 21, and 7 record, identical to the Oilers, but we had more regulation wins, and that's really what counts. Averaging 3.8 goals per game, which the Oilers are actually better than, and 2.74, which the Oilers are also better than us at. So the Edmonton was basically better than this team, but we finished first, so yeah, sucks to suck. Natchez was almost our first 100 point scorer of the video, but he's finishing with 99 here. Quinton Byfield, another season where he's over a point a game. Actually, I shouldn't say over a point a game. 82 points in 82 games. That is a point a game. Dylan Gunther was great for us. Kuzmenko had a fantastic season on that third line. This team's absolutely rolling right now. And the goaltending numbers, Shesterkin, keep doing your thing. 44 wins, 4 shots, a 910 to 270. But you know what? I don't care about the regular season because we know what's about to happen here. The Stanley Cup final, the LA Kings are about to complete the three-peat. This team's going to go down in the history books right here. After countless disappointing seasons to start the video, we're about to complete a three-peat. No one saw this coming. Even me. I really did not think this team would see any success, but here we are. All right, so we already knew this would happen. This was the warm-up for us. Anaheim, they can't even compete with us, and we're taking them out in the first round here. Well, I mean, ideally, we'd take them out in the first round. Yeah, we're not going to be blowing a 3-1 series lead. We're done in six games here. Nah, low-key, this is actually pretty funny. The Battle of Alberta in the first round, and the Calgary Flames are taking down the Oilers. But I'm low-key nervous about the Calgary Flames because if they're able to beat Edmonton in a seven-game series, then they're legit. We can't take them lightly. So we were able to take the first two games of the series, but unfortunately we've dropped two straight here. So Calgary has all the momentum. We can't allow them to take game five. Luckily, we're taking that one four to three. And in game six, are we going to be closing this series out? It doesn't look like it. We're off to game seven. Game seven with a three-peat on the line. This team better show up. So we already know how many big-time players we have on this team. Now it's time for us to make some big-time plays. We're picking up two goals in the first period here. In the second period, Quinn Byfield's going to double down. We should have this game in the bag. And it looks like we do. We're going to close it out in the third period. And we're off to the conference finals. Shout out to Miro Heiskanen. He picked up a goal in the postseason this time around. So here we go. Four games away from the Stanley Cup final. And then another four from completing the three-peat. No more messing around here. We went to game seven in the second round. I didn't like that, but that was the only scare we were going to have here. It's time for us to complete this dynasty. No, we really can't be stopped right now. Game five and a chance at the Stanley Cup final. We're going to be dropping that one, but that's fine because we're going to respond in game number six here and we've reached the Stanley Cup final. The Carolina Hurricanes are up next. I'm not worried about Carolina. This team has all the momentum. I thought we were about to sweep the Stanley Cup final. The three-peat is right here. Do not blow a 3-0 series lead when we have a chance in the Stanley Cup final. We have a chance at a three-peat Pete here. We did it. We really did it. The LA Kings, five embarrassing years to start this video off, and we've won back to back to back Stanley Cups. And y'all already know we're going for the four, Pete. Shesterkin, I don't care if you're aging out, we're bringing you back for next season. We just got to keep running it back with the same core. This team keeps winning, and Martin Natchez, he keeps leading the way. Natchez, 28 points. Quinton Byfield, 25. Pierre Luc Dubois, 25. The big time players are making big time plays. Shesterkin, 16 wins, two shots, a 902 to 284. It's time running out for you, though because it might be you've dropped a starter potential in 86 overall there's a very good chance you bring in a new goaltender next season but i mean igor sterkin like he's won his three straight stanley cups i feel like we just gotta ride it out with him at this point for the rest of the rebuild he's got to be the guy all right so i decided to use my draft picks for once and boy was that a bad choice with the 160th overall pick we're getting a low lead potential defenseman that's the only good player we've got in the draft everyone else has been bottom six potential no nah, but we really went one for six on draft picks that was tough that was not a good look for us. All right, so we got to give out some extensions for the final couple years here. Pierre Luc Dubois, you've been a great player for the team. Didn't think I would say those words, but we're bringing you back 7.8 million for the next four. You've really improved since the start of this video. You're up to an 88 overall. You started at like an 83, 82. Things weren't looking good for you, but here we are. Who would have thought? Also, Kane Gooley, I'm actually really contemplating bringing you back. Never mind, I'm not bringing you back for $6 million. Then again, you are an 84 overall, and that wouldn't be the worst decision in the world here. I'll think about that one. Okay, I thought long and hard, also known as about four seconds we're not bringing him back who's was not coming back and neither is our turry lekkonen but you know who is going to be returning to the team igor shesterkin two more years here 7.5 million is quite the price that i'm not giving you how about we do 6.5 for the next two years i feel like that's a fair contract actually i'll do 6.6 .6 for the next two and you can be our goaltender for the final two years okay never mind igor shesterkin wants a bit more money i do want to do two years here but maybe two years at seven million dollars i don't want to do more than seven million but if i have to i will so here you go igor there's the extension you're signing we have 11 million dollars in cap space 
to work with and we got assigned three players we can make that happen all right so we only have one extension to give out for next season and that's gonna be to quentin byfield that will keep him around for the rest of the rebuild we're doing 10.8 for the next eight seasons that's actually a really good deal for him seeing as he is a 93 overall the rest of these guys we're not too worried about i mean i will sign a couple of rookies here because you never know this 78 overall he might be able to crack the lineup okay so i think this is our plan for the final two years basically i want to run the exact same team this season and next season and p10 i think he could be incredible for the bottom six here he's an 86 overall and he fits on the third line that's exactly where he's going to be playing two second rounders and a first rounder i'm not surprised this isn't enough i'm probably gonna have to do two first round picks why mess around let's start with that so we're doing two first rounders and a second rounder i'm going to send that over to the anaheim ducks they're saying no but i know we got some prospects we can work with here not a ton of prospects we have a few so here's one defenseman that we picked up a couple seasons ago i forget where we got him from i think it was the philadelphia flyers no it was the calgary flames but he's a 77 overall i'm gonna add him into this package and we're actually getting this done pretty easily and then the next guy we're gonna be picking up is coming from the carolina hurricanes it's gonna be sugloboff he's an 82 overall sniper and he can fit on the third line that's where he's gonna be playing and we're actually not gonna have to pay him too much i sent a prospect over in the deal definitely worth that price and for Petten or p10 i don't really know what his name is all i know is he's gained four Four million for the next two. I think it's Petan, not Petan. Doesn't really matter because he's joined the team. And Sugalbov will do three million for the next three. A nice little three by three there. That's a good deal for us. We basically got the entire forward core locked up. Our defense is looking great. It's time for us to win. So we've already completed the three peat. Now it's time for the impossible. We're completing the four peat here. Byfield, Natchez, Dylan Gunther on the first line, Peyton Krebs, Pierre Luc Dubois, and Kaliev on the second line. The bottom six saw a massive upgrade here. I shouldn't say a massive upgrade, but we do have an 87 overall on the fourth line. And we do have an 82 overall Sugloboff on the third line. They're getting plus one boost here, a plus five boost on the second line here. Well, the top line's only getting a plus four boost, but I don't think that really matters too much. The defense here, absolutely spectacular. You're not going to find a better top four than this. So although our third pairing is a bit weak here, we're going to be able to survive. And we also can survive with this man in between the pipes. 85 overall Shesterkin. He's continuing to decline here, dropped to fringe starter potential. This could potentially be his final season. But if it is, we'll find a replacement for him next season. But until then, it's time to complete the four peat so i think it's safe to say so far in nhl 24 this is the first video where i've ever completed a three peat because a three peat's almost impossible to do you could have absolutely everything going right for you and then losing the first round in a sweep so many variables are at play but so far we've won three in a row so let's go ahead and win four at this point this team is just pure greatness first in the entire league with a 56 22 and 4 record the offense is absolutely flying 4.1 goals per game first time in this video we've been over four goals per game and the defense absolutely fantastic as well we're still below three goals that's what we're aiming for okay i'm not gonna lie martin nature she kind of let me down here 99 points once again can you not record 100 or something like finish with a 100 point season quinn byfield incredible from you 47 goals 48 assists for 95 points that's career high period luke dubois over a point a game kaliev just short of a point a game this team's actually just rolling like nobody can stop us and the goaltending number shesterkin 46 wins one shot a 904 and a 285 age is starting to catch up to you plain and simple you've dropped to an 83 over overall fringe start potential but i believe you have one last good run in you so in what could potentially be shesterkin's final playoff run we're starting with the nashville predators we've already completed the three peat the four peats around the corner here all i need is 16 wins that's not too much to ask so i'm pretty sure i said at the beginning of this season when completing a three peat anything can go wrong you're doing absolutely fantastic first in the entire league and then you lose in the first round well so far nashville's putting up a pretty good fight against us we split the series with them but luckily we're going to be winning game five can we close it out in game six because i don't really want to go to game seven here hopefully that's exactly what happens another overtime victory three of our four wins in this series came in overtime but hey a win is a win is a win is a win and we're off to the second round now who would have saw this coming a second round matchup against the Edmonton Oilers. This team hasn't been able to beat us for a while. However, things are a bit different this time around. Shesterkin's dropped to an 83 overall. We're not the team we used to be. I mean, technically, defensively, and our forward core is better, but the goaltending has definitely taken a step back. But you know what? I still believe in Shesterkin and watch him dominate Edmonton. Hopefully, that doesn't backfire on me. Similar to the last series, we're going to be taking the first two games, but we're going to be dropping the next two. So, game five is going to be an important one. We can't lose this one. That would be three straight losses in a row things are not looking good for the la kings but i know for a fact this team can bounce back if anyone's bouncing back it's going to be the la kings but it looks like times finally ran out for us and honestly this wasn't even shesterkin's fault it's the fact that we didn't score any goals in these final two games game five and game six we got shut out it was only a matter of time before this team lost we won three stanley cups in a row 
we weren't gonna win four let's be honest so just like that year number nine of the rebuild has been complete we have one more to win a stanley cup basically we're gonna run it back with the exact same team except i'm gonna try to pick up a 90 overall goaltender we're gonna run it back with a great goaltender and then this team should be able to hoist one more stanley cup like clearly this team wasn't playing up to expectations i've seen all of these guys play better but shesterkin this ain't it an 885 and a 321 you're just not the guy you used to be anymore plain and simple everyone's gotta know it's eventually time to hang up the skates okay now this is actually worst case scenario Shesterkin didn't retire so we actually have to find a way to get rid of his contract i have a feeling it's gonna be very hard to trade that contract away okay so basically the plan is to pick up this guy from the carolina hurricanes here simmons he's a 77 overall left defenseman he was just drafted seventh overall now the reason i'm actually willing to trade these draft picks right here because we're not going to get a good prospect with them like best case scenario we're getting bottom six at least if we acquire this guy right here we can trade him immediately after the draft here and we'll actually get something for him i don't know if my logic's making any sense i don't think it is all i know is simmons is joining our team and then with the rest of these draft picks we're just going to package them all up together and then get like a second round pick or something so this is going to be the other trade we're picking up a third and fifth rounder from the anaheim ducks we're not making any selections here because no player we would draft would have any trade value for next season all we need are players with trade value that's all we're focused on Shesterkin, I want to personally thank you for helping us get that three-peat here. And since you were able to help us get the three-peat, I'll send you to the greatest team of all time to finish out your career, the St. Louis Blues. I'm not sending you to Arizona. That's just rude. All right, so for pushing for a Stanley Cup here, we have to bring in one of the best in the entire game. And right now, that's actually Jesper Wallstead. He's the highest rated goaltender in 88. He has a superstar X factor. He's only 29 years old. We're going to be acquiring him for a first-round pick. Obviously, it's going to cost a bit more in a first-round pick, but we got some assets we can work with here. Thankfully, they actually want some of these prospects, so we can just send a couple over. We're going to start with this guy right here, and I think that actually might be enough to get this deal accepted. Actually, they're going to be saying no. I'm very surprised at that. We can send one of these young defensemen over. So, Rue 2, I think you're going to be the missing piece in this deal. We're going to send that over. We got Jesper Wallstead. We got a bit of money to work with, $6 million to be exact. Let's go bring a few more guys onto this team because I'm looking at improving the bottom six a little bit. All right, I'm working on potentially a massive deal, but we got to turn some of these prospects and third round picks into more valuable picks and this Boston second rounder is actually pretty valuable so we're going to try to acquire that I guess we're not going to be able to get the fourth rounder but as long as we can get the second round pick we're going to be in good shape so we got that second rounder now we just got to keep on flipping assets the next trade we're going to be looking at is two fourth rounders and a low leap potential prospect over to the Calgary Flames and we're getting a second round pick and the reason we're acquiring all these picks is we're going to send them all over to the San Jose Sharks and we're going to get Henley he's a left winger 85 overall he's going to be massive for our bottom six I'm going to send that package over they're saying no you know what we just gotta keep on flipping assets we're eventually getting this player from san jose so i actually take it back we're not going to be acquiring that player from the san jose sharks but instead we're going to try to get hamill from the columbus blue jackets he's an 87 overall that could potentially fit on the third line this guy would be a lot more valuable so i'm going to offer this package over they're accepting immediately now it's time for us to win a stanley cup no doubt about it we're ready now here we go for the final season of the rebuild this team's winning a stanley cup if we're not winning it's absolutely rigged you see the forward core you already know who we have a plus four boost on the first line plus five on the second plus two on the third a plus one on the fourth line and we even have an 88 overall on our fourth line an 88 overall player on our fourth line there's teams in the nhl right now that don't have an 88 overall that's how good we are the defensive core here absolutely spectacular 290s on the right side and 89 on the left and 85 on the left we're not going to worry too much about the third pairing they're getting a plus two boost so you already know these two guys are going to be able to hold it down and to cap it all off i don't care who's the healthy scratch we got jesper wallstead that's what we're worried about 29 years old and 88 overall he's got a superstar x factor he's ready to take over the reins he saw what shesterkin did with this king's team and he's looking to top shesterkin i mean that's not going to be possible because you're not going to win three stanley cups in a row then maybe you can cap off our fourth of the video. Now, this is the perfect way to end a video like this off. First in the entire league with a 60, 16, and 6 record. We're unstoppable right now. The best offense in the league, the best defense as well. We're just a step above the rest. Martin Natchez, I am so proud of you. 116 points. You finally did it. You're over a point a game. Gunther, 98. Quinton Byfield, 96. And I already know Jesper Wallstead, incredible numbers. 51 wins, 7 shots, a 910, a 249. 
Give us the Stanley Cup right now. No point wasting our time in the playoffs. But you know what? For some reason, the NHL still wants to have the playoffs, so we might as well just make it quick. 16 games in a row, and we'll take home the Stanley Cup. We got to start with the Arizona Coyotes. If we lose to Arizona, I will buy an Arizona Coyotes jersey. That's how confident I am in this team right here. We're a 60-win team. They're like a 39-win team. In the event that Arizona does beat us, this video needs to get 5,000 likes. I'm not doing it unless we get 5,000. All right, it's time to stand on business here. We better not lose to the Arizona Coyotes. Okay, we drop game one. Okay, I'm very concerned. We're winning back-to-back -back games here. Okay. The series is tied two games apiece. We better not lose here. Game five. Okay, we're taking that one. Close this out in game six. We can't go to game seven. Whatever you do, do not send us to game seven. Okay, we're taking out Arizona. I was very concerned after the first four games. But you know what? We closed it out. Thankfully, I don't have to buy that Arizona Coyotes jersey. I was actually so concerned. No, but real talk, I was so incredibly nervous. And Edmonton sucks to suck. You're losing in the first round once again. We're taking on the 42-win Anaheim Ducks. But we have to be careful here because Arizona was a 39-win team and they took two games away from us. So we can't take any team lightly here. Okay, so this is a pretty easy series for us. Anaheim's not putting up a fight. We're taking them out in five games here. None of these games were close. I mean, that's a lie. This game was close, and so was this one. But outside those two games, we were dominating the series. So we moved on to the conference finals. This team's been here quite a few times, and we've been able to win, I think, every single time. We have the Minnesota Wild up next. Minnesota's not stopping us. This team is built different right now. I can't see any team realistically stopping us. So Minnesota's putting up a good fight against us, but I'm never betting on my LA Kings. 8-1 to one in game number 5, and we're closing this out in game 6. We're off to the Stanley Cup final. Never mind, I guess Minnesota's going to force a game 7 here. They want this to be a competitive series. But I'm never going to doubt my Kings. They're absolutely dominating right now. In the first period, we're going to be scoring the first goal of the game. We're doubling down in the second period. You already know we're taking this one. 3 nothing in game 7. We We've done this before, and the last time we did this, we won a Stanley Cup, so we're going to do it again. So over the last five years, we've made it to four Stanley Cup finals. The first five years of this rebuild, they were rough on the team, but you know what? They prepared us for the next five, four Stanley Cup appearances, and it's about to be four Stanley Cups. The LA Kings have a chance to certify themselves as one of the greatest dynasties of all time if they can win a Stanley Cup here. We swept them. We swept the Islanders for the Stanley Cup. We're one of the greatest teams of all time, straight up. Four Stanley Cups in five years? How many teams have done that before? And how many teams have done that in the salary cap era? We might be the first. Okay, this is wild. Plus 27, plus 26, plus 29, plus 20. There is not a single team that could compete with us right now. We were absolutely dominating everyone. And the goaltending numbers, Jesper Wallstead, you were able to do what Igor Shesterkin did, and that's win Stanley Cups. 16 wins, two shots, a 916, a 251. I don't know why I said Stanley Cups. You only want us one Stanley Cup. But you know what? We were able to win four Stanley Cups in a 10-year period, and we were actually able to win four Stanley Cups in a five-year period. One of the greatest teams of all time, and if you made it to the end of this video, comment Igor for Igor Shesterkin. That man's going to go down as the greatest LA Kings goaltender of all time. You heard that right. Better than Jonathan Quick. I mean, he was here for a lot shorter time, but when this man was here, he did some fantastic things. We're going to ignore the first three years he was with the team because those were some dark times. But then in a four-year stretch, he won three Stanley Cups in a row. He was leading this team to greatness during the postseason. He's going to go down as one of the greats. Show it to Igor Shesterkin.